Hi guys, my name's Lewis Paul and I'm one of the videographers within the media team at Nash Tackle. And what I'm hoping is this is going to be the start of a series of vlogs that are kind of show you a behind the scenes look at what I get up to on a daily basis. So welcome to the first vlog. I joined Nash about nine months ago and since day one it's been absolutely hectic. First few days were actually spent up at head office getting to know the place and also getting to know the guys I'm going to be working with. And after a couple of days in the office it was all agreed that we all head up to the carp camp run by the carp society up at Horseshoe Lakes to basically lend a hand with the event. The carp camp's a brilliant event and it brings lots of different people from all over the industry together to give something back to fishing. And I really can't wait for this year's event because Nash Tackle are going to be taking more of an active role this year and a lot more of us are going to be taking part. Soon after the carp camp, it was time to go out and film a float of fishing video, which ended up being the floater over road trip. It was a great opportunity for me just to kind of see how I was going to be working within a team. But luckily at Nash Tackle we've got quite a few of us within the media team so being out on the floater rotor trip it kind of gave me that insight into what the future was going to be like for myself on future shoots and overall it was a brilliant experience. There's something I can't wait to do again this year once the warmer weather comes along and hopefully floater rotor road trip 2 will be just as successful. When I first joined Nash, one of the sort of job roles I was going to be given was to be working closely with Dave Mag. I've known Dave for quite a few years. I remember him back at Jerry's at Wimbledon and him actually selling me my first Nash hoodie many, many years ago. So when I was told that I was going to get a chance to actually go out and film with him and work closely with him, I was quite excited and quite looking forward to it. And the first job that we decided to try and do with him was to film a diary piece. Dave had a really successful spring and... Myself and Ollie decided, myself and Ollie or Ollie and I? Ollie and I. Decided to head up to the Horton Lodge to spend the evening with him, play a bit of pool, and also, more importantly, record the dialogue for Dave's diary. With things being so busy, sadly, we haven't managed to get out and film much else with Dave within this time, but the plan is to get back out with Dave in the early spring to kind of catch up with him and find out what he's been up to over this winter. So one of the real highlights for me last year was having young Finlay from Cumbria come down and spend the week with me on a bit of work experience for school. Me and Finlay had a really busy week that week and we got plenty done, loads of product videos, a couple of know-hows. He learned plenty and it was for me it was nice to have an extra set of hands. And to end the week nicely, myself and Finlay and the guys from work all headed down to Crowborough for a nice carpy summer social. We had a great time, great food, even better company, and to top it off, Finley ended the session catching a lovely carp. I tell you what, we're in one of the most beautiful parts of the country at the Carp Syndicate. Um, Ash has very kindly invited a number of us from Nash down, including young Finn who's been doing his work experience this week. And we've got a multitude of tasks that need to be completed today. Fishing wasn't one of them. <laughs> A lot of my fishing last year, and to be fair for the last few years, has been very much social fishing. And although I've not had my head into a lake, it's been quite nice being able to float around and get to fish all these weird and wonderful places. Luckily, all of us at Nash really enjoy our fishing, and we try and get out on a fairly regular basis, so there was a few opportunities for me to tag along as well last year. One of the locations for the socials last year was up at Bramblemere, and luckily, on our weekend session there, we actually managed to catch a few.
I was also really fortunate to get a guest session up on Grenville last year. I went up there with my mate Carl Pitcher and he managed to catch loads of big fish. Although I played cameraman a lot that session, luckily I managed to nick one myself. Within the media team we try and get together at least once a month. Sometimes that's in the office but we do try, especially when the weather's nice, to try and get out in the bank. And one of the socials we had was up at Royston. On top of trying to have a meeting we actually decided to get together and try and bulk film a load of the product videos. But the rods were out and Alex managed to catch a couple. But I was just having my bacon sandwich. I hear a few beeps. I got a fish. <laughs> like the human centipede of the media team. <laughs> <laughs> so as well as fishing up at Royston, we have actually got together on a nice special lake in the middle of Raysbury. Considering the time of year and with conditions looking pretty bleak, we just decided to crack on, get done with the meeting and discuss the topics that we needed to, get the plan set for the, the year to come. But halfway through, our social media manager Alfie decided to sneak off and freeline some maggots and actually managed to nick one. It's my first time freelining maggots, thanks to suggestions from a few of the lads. Thanks to Les from Angling Projects for having us down. It's certainly one I'll keep in the album and remember so often you get December carp as pristine as this one. The lake we were fishing is actually run by Les Weber and I've been very really fortunate to get to know him quite well over the last sort of 12 months and get to find out a bit more about the Angling Project itself. Angling Project has been run for about 40 years on a non-profit charity basis. Les and his team offer a chance for schools and veteran groups or youth groups and scout groups to use his facilities to help people get into fishing. He provides all of the equipment, all of the bait, even the skills that they've all collected over the last 40 years in their own angling to help people who necessarily wouldn't get the opportunity to go fishing and to learn how to fish come into the sport that we all love. Les helps all manner of groups all year round and because he doesn't charge for the service it's all made possible thanks to donations from anglers. Les is actually going to be at the Northern Angling Show and the big one this year so if you do see him stop by and have a chat with him and find out a bit more about the project itself. Alternatively, link below is the Just Giving page for angling projects that was set up by a handful of anglers recently and what it will mean is that Les can continue to do his great work for the sport. Myself and the guys that work at Nash Tackle really appreciate what Les and his team are doing and this year we're really going to try and support what he's doing by attending some of the days that he's got the kids down as well as raising some money for him as well. So keep an eye on the Nash Tackle social media for when them sort of events come up. Since getting to know Les a little bit better, he's been very kind to invite myself and my friend Dan Whitford down for a couple of sessions to fish for the carp that live in the lake. And we've both been really lucky to catch some of the special residents. How about that for an absolute winter cracker? Love the little bit of the strawberry crush. With Nash Tackle being a multinational company, it's quite often that we get some of the European media team visit us and spend a bit of time with us to get involved with some of the content creating over here. It was on one of these trips that I actually had the pleasure of meeting Thierry. After starting the week with Dan and Ollie, 
Thierry then spent a couple of days with me on a shoot with one of the Nash anglers to try and film a bit of content about the washing line rig. Things didn't exactly go to plan, but I did manage to catch a couple using the washing line rig myself. Really, really happy. Just over 19 pound. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a reward for going to get the pizzas a minute ago, so. <laughs> Kind of goes to show just how effective this all meth can be. Rod's been back out for about an hour, and uh, even with the disturbance of me being on the spot, Rod's rattled off. Life in the media team doesn't always go to plan, especially when it comes to catching carp live for camera. The so guard Jib, what's happened? I'm supposed to do a mag feature and it was frozen solid. Bit of a stupid mistake by setting the bivvies up. But no, we're gonna pack up now, head off home, try again for another feature. And although things do go wrong at times, when it does all come together and someone does catch life of the camera, it does make it all worthwhile. At the back end of last year, it was time to try and get out and film Urban Banks 10 Liverpool. And luckily for me, I was free to help out on that shoot and get involved. With Liverpool being quite a drive from the head office, myself and Alan decided to head up a night early to go fish a river in Chester, and that was certainly an experience in itself. But Alan decided to set up a tight and hide on the bank, whereas I decided to sleep next to a set of steps. And in the middle of the night, I was awoken several times by drunk passers-by who actually thought I was homeless. I did eventually get some sleep though, and we started the next day bright and early, heading into Liverpool. It was a really successful shoot. Craig and Alan both managed to catch a couple, which meant that we could put together Urban um, Banks 10, which we were really happy with the end result. I really enjoyed my time in Liverpool and getting to experience what an Urban um, Bank shoot was like, and I can't wait for the next one. Another one of the productions I was part of last year was filming the 30 Years of Cassian video with Steve Briggs and Joan. The plan was to try and get two videos done in one trip whilst we were down in the south of France. We're on our way down to see Steve Briggs, who's fishing at Cassian. Um, I've always wanted to go down there, amazing place. However, we're gonna tie it in with a little trip to see Remy, who also lives in the area. Now, I met Remy a couple of years ago. We did a brilliant session down on a public lake in France, and I've been meaning to go back and see him again. So, this is our opportunity. Let's see how we get on. Cassian was a great experience and it was a lovely place and somewhere that I really wanted to go. Uh, but things really didn't go to plan at all. Well, we're set on the slipway at Lac de Saint Cassien. And all would be lovely and good except Muggins here lost the van key. Yeah, that's right. Don't know where it is. It's either falling out of my pocket, jumping in and out of the boat, or God knows what. Briggsy can't find it up where we were earlier on. Uh, the good news is, well there ain't really no good news, the good news is that the soonest I can get it is probably a couple of days and that involves sending over the, uh, the spare from over at Nash Towers. Volkswagen assistance weren't really much of an assistance, a week it will take to get a new key so that's not really an option. Uh, in the meantime we're kind of stuck, we've got, well, we've got a camera gear, we've got a boat, we've got an outboard and a flat battery and that's it. Bivvies, beds, everything else is all in the van which we can't get to. Um, so yeah, I don't know quite what's going to happen yet over the next couple of days, um, but it's going to be an adventure. Hey Lou, welcome to uh, French trips. Lovely times. <laughs> well, sometimes. So as you can imagine, we were really in a right pickle when a spanner had really been thrown into the works. Ollie rang Remy and he very kindly come and picked us up from Cassian and took us back to his place whilst we waited for the key to be sent out. Not wanting to give up too easily on the mission, Remy managed to put enough gear together for himself and Ollie to head out and go try and catch a fish from a special piece of water. After a bit of exploring, Ollie actually managed to find a few fish and after informing Remy, he grabbed his gear and went about trying to catch one. And it didn't take long for Remy to hook one.
Remy catching one was a proper buzz and a real high for all of us. And once it got dark, we packed up and headed back to Remy's for dinner. Luckily for us, the keys actually turned up the following morning. So after picking up the van, we decided that we were going to do one more day session with Remy before joining Steve and Joan back on Cassian. And luckily for me, I managed to get myself a bite. Bit of a struggle not to uh, not to run down the rocks there, were there? Yeah, it was uh, a little bit tempting to absolutely leg it down, but it's pretty treacherous. So, but yeah, over the moon. But unfortunately, that's where our luck then ran out because once we got back to Cassian to finish off film with Steve and Joan. We'd actually discovered Joan and then broken her leg whilst we'd been gone. So really to summarise my first European trip with Nash Tackle, anything that could have gone wrong, it did. Fortunately though for me, not every week is like a week in Cassian. Majority of the time I'm actually sat at my desk editing away or emailing, creating know-hows or filming and editing product videos. And what that allows me to do is get out on a fairly regular basis with the guys from work. And more recently, one of those trips has been out with Mark Goosen. The reason for meeting up with Mark was to film a product video about the new hook rangers coming from Nash. And also for me to get a chance to meet Mark and find out a little bit more about his history. It was a really insightful day with Mark and I really enjoyed his company. And I can't wait to spend more time with him in the summer and spring. More importantly though, I was really impressed with the new range of hooks. If you ever watched any of my vlogs whilst I was a carpology, I always did a section called Hardware, which was basically me choosing my favourite items from that particular period of time between the vlogs. And it's something that I want to run into this series as well. So just like my old vlogs, I'm going to point out three bits of hardware that really stand out to me. And the first item would be the hook range. I'm really impressed by them, they're super sharp, super strong and I can't wait for you guys to be able to put them into your own fishing. My second choice would definitely be the ZC clothing range. The whole range is top quality but what I really enjoyed was getting out and filming some of the promo content. So we'd spent a couple of days getting some pictures for the catalogue, some videos for social media and then we decided to meet up with Jamie Bellhouse and a couple of models that he knows in the Nash Photography Studio to get some cool Instagram content. And my third and final choice would definitely be the Bank Life range, but in particular one product from it being the Nash Gazebo. Originally I couldn't see where it fit into my sort of angling or even my work life, but over the last sort of six months I've had several opportunities to use it and granted it hasn't come on every shoot that I've been on, but when it has come along it's been really convenient just to have a space that we can cook or socialise in or get our equipment out of the elements and just be comfortable really. The gazebo comes on a lot of our trips. I'm really glad I took the opportunity to sit down in front of the camera and tell you what I've been up to over the last nine months. Spring's just around the corner, I can't wait. The carp are going to be on the munch soon and I can't wait to get amongst them. I'll see you in the next vlog. <laughs>